This man, Studs Terkel, is truly a man for all seasons. There are so many sides to Studs. He is an author, playwright, actor, commentator, lecturer, has an enormously successful radio show uh, in Chicago, and indeed has been called a national resource, and I think for all the right reasons. And his newest offering is this book. And when I tell you that I had uh, physical feelings reading this book, I really do mean it. It's called The Good War, An Oral History of World War II. And in case you don't know Stud's work, what he does best is he takes the words of others and puts them together and lets us know a bit about what has happened past. Why this, Studs? Why this? World War II, we know of romantically through movies, John Wayne, The Flag, Iwo Jima. What was it like? See, World War II itself changed the whole face of our country, of the world. The world has never been the same since. No. Never. A new middle class came into being when the boys came back, GI Bill. Suburban living came into being. Before World War II, only the rich lived in suburbs, really. The great many of us lived in cities. Now most people live. Out of World War II, Levittown, Park Forest. Cold War began, World War II. There was an air of prosperity, World War II, post-World War II. There was a feeling of euphoria when the Russian soldiers and the American soldiers met at the River Elba. The same day United Nations was formed, there's disillusionment. But many of the young, the boom babies, you're one of them. You and I were just yeah. talking about this and what this means to me. Because I was born after the war, my uncles would not talk about their That's war experience. That's just the point. You but see, I learned about the battles see, and everything in your school. Your uncles talk about uh, humorous stories, but there's a safety, a blocking out of all the horrors. It's called the good war in quotes. My contemporaries, guys who in it speak of, we were in the last good war in contrast to that obscenity, that is Vietnam, see. There was a cause, it seemed Hitler, the Holocaust, but no war is good. And so the good, the adjective and the noun war don't match, so it's an ironic title. Well, but mostly, you're a boom baby, a whole new generation. You were never really told about it. Uh, humorous stories, that's all. And so I find that many of your generation, this is a plug, but it's true, many are buying this book for their father. Say, look, Pop, this is it. And it's not simply about the soldiers. It's about people at home. Well, that's right. Women the working home in front. the fence plants. Well, you you were you served and you were at home. You mm. were on the home front. Yeah, I was stateside. What uh, was the what was the what was the feeling of the country then? If you well, were you not see, overseas. World War II, in contrast to all that followed, especially Vietnam, had a big consensus. There were uh, people objecting, but there were few in number. Conscientious objectors, of course, isolationists. But the huge consensus was Hitler. Imperial Japan, Hitler Holocaust. So there was this feeling that was not present in those that followed. But mostly, it's thoughts of all variety of people, mostly Americans, but there's the English woman, or ordinary working woman experienced the blitz of England. A guy who was a prisoner of war here, the Russian front, you know, they lost 20 million mm. people. Amazing. I know, we forget that, don't we? Mm. There's also in here, there are words um, that, that shocked me, I suppose, in a way. Uh, a man who worked with Barbie. Barbie, oh, sure. who is now, has run off to Bolivia. But we didn't, uh, many American soldiers, hand passports to help him. Were, were we really helping? Klaus Barbie was the butcher of Lyon. Yes. He killed thousands of people. He was a Nazi um, SS guy, or as, as the secret police. He was the head of it in Lyon, in France. And we helped him because now the Cold War was beginning. It was all over. We didn't care about the Nazis. We want to know about those guys, the Reds, you see. So he was helping. We paid him 7,000 bucks a month. And the guy I got in the book, Ed Dobringhaus, who teach, was a professor up at Wayne State in Detroit, was the guy in charge of Barbie. He told me the story there. So all sorts of stuff is in it. The making of the bomb, the, the guy who dropped the bomb, one of the guys in Nagasaki tells about it, the scientist who worked on it, a chaplain who blessed the planes, who's now a very ardent peace activist. All variety. So kids, boom babies, your generation in it too. What? Here we came out of it. So oh, well, in a sense, it's people telling their story. Long buried, long suppressed, it comes out. And of course, it kind of jumps at you. It really does jump at you. But what do we learn from this. Mm. Uh, I am a part of the baby boom generation, and even young people today are so very afraid of the next war. Well, they should it might, be. Well, but what did these people that you interviewed, 
who so openly gave their feelings. Mm. What what did you gain from them? What are they are they afraid? What, well, what are their words mixed. of wisdom? See, it's all a variety of people, some of whom I disagree with. They're in it too. But in the main, they speak of that moment in history, how the whole world changed. That took us out of the Depression, strangely enough. The New Deal helped people. You know, that's being destroyed now, of course. Well, that's another story, isn't it? What Reagan's doing to, to all these things that helped people back in those days. But uh, the war ended the Depression. There was still 11 million unemployed. And so there was this euphoria and then the disillusionment. What we've learned is that war, even the good war, is horrible mm. and makes savages of us all. Even good, decent kids become savages in the field of battle. Did you find that issues like women's rights, human rights, civil rights were kind of unheard of in those days? No, there was, see, when the women worked in the plant, they got that taste of being independent. And then when the guys came back, said, you must give up your job, go back home. Some did, but the seeds were planted. The seeds of independence were planted. Independence or participation? Both. And of course, we haven't talked about what happened to Japanese Americans. Talk about the that. The shameful episode. How they were imprisoned, arrested day after Pearl Harbor just because of their look. The cast of their face. Grandmothers, others, farms taken away. And they went in, in, in concentration camps. Called. And we haven't talked about the segregated army back in the Well, that's days. right, because that's, there, were, there, was, there no, were no integrated was, troops. There were black troops. The and, irony and, is black people, black soldiers, here's the irony, had to fight for the right to risk their lives at the front. Think of the irony. How crazy can you get? They had to fight for the right to risk their lives. They got the, the KP duty and the, and oh, the, they and the were terrible duty. Servants. That's all they were for a long and had to fight for this. And this happened. And so in, in back home, had to fight for the right to work in plants, too. So all this was happening at the war. There were seeds of other things happening. So it's a monumental moment, epical moment in the history, not just of US, of the world. How difficult was it to get people to talk about? Oh, they the, want to. Well, but some who came back and had nightmares and the pain of ah. seeing limbless people, and that's in here. How did you get them to open up? See, when you start talking, if they think you're interested, it's the way I work anyway. I horse around, I improvise. It's not interview, it's a conversation. You know, I might even get drunk with a guy, have a cup of coffee with this old woman. Once they feel it, they start talking, and it's like a dam opening floodgates open and that moment that was so long suppressed comes out and then it floods you. Is that because you're an honest journalist? You take the words and you don't I edit am. them? I'm just You really curious. don't edit them. You don't even correct the grammar. Oh no, I want people to sound, I edit because it'll be forever and long. Sure. You want to get the essence of it. You're like a brain surgeon. You want to get those eight pages out of the 60. I want you, you to give keep. us some of the essence. If you would explain this gentleman well, to us, if you here, could. Well, here, I, I was also went to Russia. I was there with an American bunch of writers, Harrison Salisbury, Erica Jung, Susan Santa, and, and we meet Russian writers. And I met this guy who fought to say, the most Eastern Front is where the Germans really lost. Four out of five German army guys were killed on the Eastern Front. And this guy became a writer, Gregory Baklanov. He tells about what is a soldier, what is death in war. And he says, by the way, they lost 20 million, every family, of, here's what he says. Eight of my family went to the front, three came back. We were a lucky family. My children ask, tell me about the war. I can't tell them anything. I don't like this reminiscing. A lot of people who lived after the war quite a long time start to recollect the miraculous, wonderful, brave. But of my generation, he says, a hundred went to fight, three came back, three percent. But here's the part, he says. I'm surprised I live. My friend asked, what's your attitude towards death? It's absolutely zero. With surprise, excitement, I take the fact that I'm alive. I look at my children, I look at my grandchildren, I say, only centimeters, centimeters, decided whether they, they should be on this earth or not. Where the bullet went that way, they don't know that they live on earth by accident. It was natural that I wouldn't be alive, but I lived and they happened. I can't understand it. And here's the big thing. The bullet that killed us today, it's a phrase he wrote, the bullet that killed us today, the soldier, goes into the death of generations and centuries, killing life which didn't come to exist yet. And he says, when I die as a soldier, all future is dead. And this is a diff an insight that's so exciting and so horrendous. It's what this book and war is all about.
Thank you, Studs Terkel, very much. And for uh, <clears throat> probably many watching, lost someone they loved very much. And we were just showing scenes of Arlington. And maybe this is because they're very personal words, uh, a way to remember why those lives were lost and what we were fighting for. Thank you. Great Thank to you, see man. you, always. Thank Studs you. Studs Terkel. We'll be right back. Stay with us.